thing is with the WordPress maintenance, what makes it work really well is process, is building a process where it's automated, where you are doing minimal work on it and you have everything working on its own. That is the biggest goal to it. Because if you don't set it up right and it starts eating up all your time, then it's really going against the whole, the whole purpose of it. It's taking your time and keeping you away from growing your business. The goal with WordPress maintenance is this is working in the background. It's almost 100% automated. It's taking minimal of your time. And you're able to still focus on the rest of your business. So you got the rest of your business here, a little bit maintenance here. But that little bit is you take time setting that up and building it. And once that's already built, then the value is there. Your clients are set. It's not like something that's like cheap. You don't have to feel bad like saying, okay, I'm going to sell you. It's $100 a month and we're going to do A, B, and C. But the A, B, and C only takes you three minutes a month. That's not to feel bad over because it's a process of you putting that into place. And then it's also what happens when something breaks, your expertise and your skills, that comes into play and that's where really it pays off for the client and the value is in. So I could either run through it, like I got my, you know, my notes on it, I just wasn't able to put a deck or to put it together in a way that I feel would like really help you build that process and plan. So I'll leave it up to you. I, I could go ahead and go through it and talk about it and maybe just hit the surface of it. We could do a deep dive later, or we could go ahead and keep this as a group call, you know, just talk about the opportunities and like what to look for in our market, what to look for for getting new projects. And then we could go next week into a deep dive into the WordPress maintenance. Or we could go ahead and touch the surface. I'll leave it up to you guys. Uh, I'm totally open and, you know, I kind of feel, I do feel bad about not being able to do it right now. But it was out of my control, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, can I say something? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, Jeff, first of all, I do appreciate that, um, you know, you. I'm sure you might have given it a try to do it because it was the plan. But uh, there is a very... Uh, famous uh, quote which I remembered when you were speaking and when you said and it states nothing is under control and that gives me peace you know <laughs> so saying on that I think um, I would love to hear from what other people have to say about it about what they feel about today but um, I align with you on this I think um, we can uh, talk about what we are talking and Keep this WordPress call um, for next time, if possible, maybe rather than next Thursday, if possible for you to put up things together and get it sometime in between week, like with your Sunday in next three, four days. It is work with you and the other people because um, I think everybody is home and everybody will be able to join in for the call experience, right? So if you can do it early on Sunday, Saturday, today is maybe Sunday. Sounds good. If not, um, my suggestion will be to maybe keep it for next time so that we can dive deeper and make more use of it rather than just touching the surface and you know waiting for the next week to dive deeper. This is my suggestion. But there are other people and I would love to hear what they got to say about this. Cool. Thanks, Rajab. Anyone else have any feedback or anything about it? Like I'm totally open. I I'm here just to help. I'd, I'd love if you could just do like a quick overview because one of the challenges I'm facing with maintenance is sometimes it's kind of a mixture of, you know, the automated side of the maintenance and then you've got the support requests and whether, you know, you would separate those out into two things with a budget of say two hours a month, you know, and, and some of that is the automated maintenance and some of it is, Hey, can you do this? Can you add that? And then the, the next question would be, do you also suggest having some kind of a bit of like content marketing where you're, you're you know, making suggestions or you're creating content for the site as well, and perhaps doing that yourself or managing the outsource of that. You know, it kind of feels like there's three things. There's the, the automatic maintenance, there's the support requests, and then there's creating content. Okay, how about we do this? Uh, next week we'll do a deep dive. Like I'll have the slide content, all that stuff ready. But for right now, we could just do Q and A. On it, so I, I know a lot. I already know a few of you on this call right now are currently working on putting a maintenance plan together. So how about we just do a Q and A like this for like the next 
uh, I don't know, like half an hour or, or however long you guys got questions for. And that way you could at least work some of the things out right now. And then next week we can come back and go more in depth. Hold on one second. So first one, I'm, I'm going to hit question one. And this is the biggest challenge. And this is what could really eat up the time a lot is the request from clients. All those little requests, all those, you're in a project and you're in the zone and you're getting ugh, another email, another message. You got to stop everything and it disrupts the flow. Something that could take 30 minutes, clients don't understand. That takes you hours actually because it disrupts your whole flow and, and it messes things up and throws you off schedule. And then all of a sudden you're working late and, and it gets in your personal life. So what we do is um, first in our plans, I've seen people offer like X amount of hours. Like we give you two hours inside the plans. Every time I see somebody do that, they go through, they go through hell with it. You know, like I think that right there opens up a box right there for scope creep. I think it opens up a box for those little tiny nitpickings that take up all your time. So we do not give hours inside our maintenance plans. Uh, what we do is we give an hourly rate. So by being on our maintenance plan, and we, I have something I call uh, unlimited support that I give to our clients. And the unlimited support is we allow clients to make requests no matter the size. And if it's along like it's under about 10 hours estimate work, we could have it done for them in three to five hours. Because clients not on our maintenance plan if they hit me up and they say we need like I just like the other night we actually had this happen I had uh, somebody call they're like nobody's getting our invoices I'm like you guys said you're going to go on our maintenance two months ago you have a giant e-commerce site where you get 10,000 euros on sales a month your site's going to break without maintenance and they keep asking me. I'm like and I told them like I can't do it because it's not meeting our minimum requirement we, we have a minimum level. It has to be at least $300 worth of work for me to go in it. I'm not going to go into someone's site for 30 minutes that refuses to go on our maintenance plan. So the maintenance plan and our unlimited support gives them that. And I use that as a selling point. So I tell them like, and I tell the clients like part of our maintenance plan and allows us to act more as an extension of your team. And it allows you like whenever you need something that's small, or minor something quick update, you have us to help out with that. But we can only help if you're not on our plan, we can only do it if it's on a bigger scale because it actually costs us more. So that's the first one of how I deal with, with, uh, with the time. And I tell them we got three to five business day turnaround time. I'll only do one day if it's a big emergency. If it's something like super important and like, you know, like a checkout button's not working, I'll jump in there right away and take care of the client. The second part of that is, if you're running an agency, find yourself a developer dedicated to just your maintenance plans. That has been the key to us being able to keep doing ongoing work. We have one guy, one of our developers, he's really good. He's available, he's like a freelancer, and we've built a process together. I've taken time to build a process with him. And so our process has been built so well now that I get requests from clients. It takes me about 10 minutes to, form, to put it in a way that we communicate, we use Trello, to go ahead and give it on to him. I set him up on a harvest so we could keep track of time and invoicing, and then it's done. And then it's out of my hands and he just takes care of it. And I don't do any of it. <laughs> so. Hey, hey Jeff. Yeah. I just want to know uh, the scope of maintenance uh, because I'm new in this industry. Uh, as far as I know, it's only update the plugin, update the teams, up, uh, and security, uh, security backup. Uh, but I want to know the scope of the maintenance. All right, cool. Scope of maintenance. First, Clement, let me answer John's second question, and then we'll get to yours after that. Let me write it down. Well, John, did that answer your question right there for question number one? 
Yeah, that was really good. So what I heard was um, you don't do you don't do an alley charge. There's just an alley rate, and you have an unlimited support package, which so requests uh, can be whatever size there is, and you've got a minimum level of engagement of three hundred, um, and you say that you act more as an extension of your team, which I really liked the way that was framed, and it's three to five business days turnaround, and one day if it's an emergency, and having a dedicated um, developer which I think is great, actually. And also with the three to five days turnaround, that's only if, if it's estimated under 10 hours. If it's over 10 hours, then we're going to price it out and not do hourly and then give a proper time frame. And is the unlimited support, do you have like a tiered level of packages or is that just the, the one that you want to get them onto? Uh, unlimited supports on all of our, we have tiered. Uh, we have three tiers. Uh, unlimited on all of them, but then uh, the highest tier gets priority where we do WhatsApp. Thank you. Cool. And what was question number two you had? Um, it was about what ways of uh, ways of supporting them with uh, content marketing or creating content for them. Um, sometimes there seems to be an opportunity to perhaps to do social stuff for them as well or to outsource that. So more about awareness for their for their company. So I'm just currently looking into that because I, I I did niche down for for our just design and focused on that. But currently I am starting to offer uh, like SEO startups and stuff like that. But I'm keeping it separate. I want to keep that stuff completely separate from the maintenance plans. I, I think the key to it is building a process. So you get the process for the maintenance plans, but then when you build something for say SEO or content marketing or social media to build a process for each one of those, and that'll help streamline it. And um, with the different tiers, what, what does that kind of look at? You said you had a minimum level of 300. Uh, no, the minimum level of work. Say like, say if a, a client, like we do a project for, they don't want to go on our, our maintenance plan. Uh, you know, they just want to take their website and run. And then they come back and they're like, hey, we need this picture switched out. And it's just like, you know, like that, that's where like the minimum, even though I, I mostly always do it, but I always, I, I still tell them like, look it, I'll do it for you this time. But you know, we do have a minimum level uh, of engagement for these kind of tasks. Uh, we, you know, if you want to get our maintenance plan, we could do it, but Usually we wait till we have a bigger, you know, like a longer list of tasks that's worth us taking our time to fit it in our schedule. Yep. And, and can you share what the kind of costs are for those different levels or what that might look like for, for your agency? Sure. Hold on one second. All right, let me know when you can see my screen. Can you guys all see it? Yes. All right. Wait, that's... Now, we did a rebranding ourselves. I haven't yet added it to our light box. This was our, our old uh, brand right here, but we still go off of this. So we have uh, $100 for a starter plan. That's just uh, the basics. Um, then it goes up to 220 and then 350. And I'm told it's still low. I think that it could go a lot higher and I probably will be raising the prices uh, coming up soon on it. And then if they want WooCommerce, uh, WooCommerce only is allowed on our pro plan or advanced plan. I won't add Woo. If they have a WooCommerce site, they can't go on our, our starter plan. And then they have to, you know, there's additional charges for, you know, how big their Woo store is because that takes additional work right there. And a follow-up question. Um, what do you do about reporting? So, so that comes inside, yeah, that's inside the automation. So the automation that we use, I use Manage WP. And actually, Bua, she does all of our reporting. She does all of our updating. She does all the maintenance. You know, like she does it all. 
and she sends out the reports. Like the reports are all automated. Uh, everything is like done on on a schedule, and it's it's really cheap. Like you pay for just what you use on it. And how does that fit in with the automate, the unlimited support that you mentioned? Oh, uh, what do you mean? Oh, you said that uh, you have like unlimited support. So you do request whatever the size, as long as it's under 10 hours from those tiers. I saw like a hundred, two fifty, three fifty. I think. Yeah. Is, is that per hour or is that for um, the support for the month? No, that's just for the month. Yeah. So, so if they, if they said we need to add a new section, uh, it needs to be these kind of pictures and you know, that's going to be eight hours work. Do you just tell them that's going to be eight hours? Is that how it might look like? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I would build them additional on top of it. So they get the, the one, like say if they had the starter, it'd be a hundred dollars plus then they pay the extra eight hours as well. Right. Um, and do you call that the unlimited support? No, the unlimited support is being able, being there and ready at any time to help them out, even if it's something small. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. So to stop someone saying, can you just do this? You say there's minimum of 300 pounds for small jobs, but there yeah. is unlimited support through these plans. Yep. Got it. Okay. And that number actually changes. I just threw it out there. It depends on the client. You know, I yeah. don't have a set number in there. Some clients, if they're super headache, Dude, it's a thousand dollars for a minimum, you know. So like, I, I gauge it based on the client, but I make sure I use that minimum, and that's the selling point. The selling point is, you know, the unlimited support is you have us there at any time. Anytime you need updates, you need something changed, you know, we're there for you, and we'll get it done within a few days. You know, you don't have to go find another developer. You don't have to take that chance, and yeah. That's where the big value is. I mean, how many people here have gone on a website and it's just like destroy, it looks like a Frankenstein creation in the back end. Like, you know, it's like, you could tell there's been five developers in there that all did their own thing. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Sure, can I first get to Clements and then I'll get to you, boy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. So Clement asked uh, scope of maintenance. Uh, can you, can you uh, clarify a little bit more like what you're looking for about that? Oh, you, I think you did about the services offered in it, right? Like, uh, like security. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just like remembering right there. All right. So basically uh, the scope, you have to have the basics in all of them, which is like the security monitoring, uh, the backups, um, uh, let me see, uh, uh, the updates. I think that those are like the big three, update security and backups. So those are like the main things right there. I'm gonna go back and share my screen again. So the thing is, when you're looking at the scope, that's something you need to determine. Uh, one thing I did in the process when I was building uh, our plan was I did a lot of research on what other people were doing. And I really, I, I checked out hundreds of websites of people offering services and nobody offered the identical across the board. Some people offered hosting, some didn't. Some people offered um, e-commerce support, some didn't. Uh, so it's really, I think, up to you what you want to include in it. Like, for example, for us, I make hosting mandatory. And I chose to make it mandatory because I felt I had better control on keeping the health of their site as long as I control the hosting. Uh, but as you can see, there's a long list of stuff we could offer. Let me just go down to like our big one right here. I mean, we got cloud-based hosting. We use DigitalOcean. Uh, they have an account manager, VIP, and limited support. They got like a WhatsApp, like to me, uh, emergency e-commerce. Uh, instead of doing monthly site reports, they could get daily or weekly site reports or daily backups. Uh, we offer percentages on discounts on the hourly rates. 
So one would be five, one would be 10, one would be 20% off. Uh, uptime monitoring. Oh yeah, uptime monitoring is key also if you're gonna do this. That's up there and the ones that are necessary. So security, uptime, backups, and updates. And the reason why uptime monitoring is so important is you, you need to know if something goes wrong with the site. And if something does go wrong, uh, you'll be notified if you're monitoring the uptime. Uh, you, you don't want to be in a position where a client's been paying you a couple hundred dollars a month for like a year, and then they go on and their site is down and they don't know what's up with it. You know, it won't make you look good. But by having the uptime monitoring, if it goes down, you get notifications, emails, and you could jump in and see what's going on with it. Uh, we do other things like SEO key monitoring, leak monitoring, uh, managing comments. So there's all kinds of things you could do. It's really up to you and what you want to add to it. And I think that right there is where, you know, why you need to take time on building these. You can't rush it. You can't build a plan like this in, in just one day. You got to really take time to thoughtfully consider what, what is viable for you. You might not want to do hosting. You might not want to give CDNs. Uh, choose each one and just keep making your list and find out how you can make this more valuable for your clients. Can I make a little suggestion about that comparison table, having looked yeah, at a few sure. others? Yeah. Um, sometimes when I've seen them, uh, you kind of have the same bit of copy across all three. And then as you, as you, there's more features, those are just done in bold. Or they're just done slightly differently. So you can easily, as you're scanning, see the difference between them. Oh. I'll, I'll like send that. you an example. But I think it's really thorough, especially on your pro plan, plan. And I like the idea of offering discounts on development services. I think that's, that's really good, actually. I heard someone else offering, they said, you know, it's 150 an hour for development. But if you're on our um, pro plan, it's 100. You know, so immediately you can see the value, you know, so if it's 10 hours a month, you know, it, you're, you're really making a saving by um, being on the maintenance. Definitely. And you're putting yourself in a position with clients that are, that are heavy online, that are, that they're doing heavy work and they got a lot of work. Some clients, they don't need a lot of work done, but some of them do. Some of them are really busy. And if you position yourself right and you get in there and you become their go-to, like this is great recurring revenue. This is really, if you don't have a product, like right now, if projects drop, it's like you don't have to worry because you still got the income coming in from this. I like that bowl though. I'm going to run with that one. All right, cool. Uh, Clement, did you have anything else? Did that help out at all? All right. Boy, what's up, man? Yeah. Um, my question is, uh, do you offer your service to a new client that doesn't build a site with you or some, someone else? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, I haven't yet, but I wouldn't be against it. I would first, I would, if I were to do that, I would first need to inspect the site and make sure it's in good health. If it was in good health and if it was like developed properly, then I would be open for it for sure. Oh, I'd definitely be open for it. I shouldn't even be sugarcoating it. I 100% like would be open for it. You know, I would take a hundred websites that weren't built by me and put them on my plan. <laughs> and second question is about how you manage the license. If you, if the clients comes up with uh, some plugins that have a, issue with updating or a license for that plugin that you cannot go with your plan or your process about maintenance oh so like say a client like they have a woocommerce site and they got one of those weird woocommerce plugins that they got and then yeah right uh they would have to purchase it you know like we offer uh, uh we have a library of plugins that we use in our life, that's another selling point that I have in our plants is they get licensed while they're in our plants. So they're all underneath our license. They don't have to worry about it. This is why I need to raise the price too. 
<laughs> right here. But but if they had something else that we didn't use or they needed a special plugin just for them, even if we did get it, it's the client's responsibility to pay for it. For sure. But I'm sure if they're paying us a couple hundred dollars a month for maintenance and probably hundreds more for monthly updates, they could afford, you know, another hundred, two hundred dollars to renew it. Uh, for example, that uh, if clients use the license from previous uh, developers, <clears throat> for example, how, how to deal with that? Just be honest, be honest and straightforward. Like we need to switch it over. You have something that's out of date. You need to get a license. You know, if you don't, it's going to harm your site and it's going to cost this amount. That's it. If, if you know what, if a client is trying to be cheap over like a 50, 60, $70 license, I don't know if it's the kind of client I want anyways. You know, if they start acting like really picky like that, that's already a huge red flag to me. I don't do it. You know, I pay for my license and, and I license all our stuff. I invest into it. So if I'm investing in my business and this client isn't willing to invest in their business, you know, maybe they're not ready. <laughs> I'm glad we got to talk about some maintenance because I love this topic. I love WordPress maintenance. The thing is, I, I was against it for such a long time, like from the very, my first years of doing this. And I, I had a friend that used to tell me, he's like, dude, he's like, you got to get these plans, get people on a plan. I'm like, no, I want to be able to charge $10,000 a website. And like my, my goal was like, to, I, I wanted to just get better so I could charge more. And I didn't really see the value in it. But then I came to a point where like, I wanted to charge $10,000 a website. I wanted to say no to these websites that I was saying yes to. And I found the solution and I saw that this was a solution that if I were just to get 10 or 20 websites on a maintenance plan with us, then that would cover everything for the month. And I could be more picky and choosy and I won't have that worry or stress going on. That just circling back. Sorry, I'll go interrupt. Ahead. Just circling back to uh, manage WP, um, does that cover most of the things that you need to do, or do you have extra plugins for automating some of the maintenance? I know you're going to go into a deep dive on another call. It covers everything, like everything I'm offered in here. I mean, some of the things like a CDN is in the hosting is all within the hosting we set up, but everything we got is fully automated in here. So even like the comments and spam monitoring, that's inside there. Uh, let me see. Uh, the site reports is inside there. Um, the updates is inside there. Uh, the link monitoring is in there. The uptime monitoring. Even the analytics is inside there that you could show clients inside your report. SSL certificates, that comes inside the hosting. Uh, and then other things like the plugins, license. Speed optimizations, we keep an eye on it. And that, that one's a little bit tricky right there because we can't keep always working on it, but it all depends on the website. We just make sure it's running at, at a good speed. And yeah, everything's, everything is uh, automated except for anything we have to do physical work. And then that goes uh, to our developer that we have dedicated to this. So you say, say this is set up uh, with a client and you've got them on this package and they, they contact you and they say, Oh, yeah. there's something wrong with the site. This isn't quite working. Um, you know, there's some kind of display issue. Maybe it's something that they've done through editing content. Do you then say that's going to be X amount of hours or do you just try and do it first and then tell them if it's going to go over the, the time? Yeah, I just try to do it first. I don't, I, I try to build, if you build trust with your clients, you know, from the very beginning, it, it's not, it's never really been an issue. Because we've, like with one client, they've, they've given us a load of requests and at the end of the month, we just tell them, right, you, you know, you've gone over two hours or something and that always causes a sting. And I've got an appointment with them just to, to kind of renegotiate the maintenance contract, just to say, well, look, you know, it's going to, it's kind of coming in at roughly 
five hours, not the two hours that we talked about. What, what do you think about that? Why are they, why are they like, why are they questioning just two hours of work? Well, I, we've always had this problem with the, our main contact there where it's, he's got a bit of a scarcity mindset, you know, so I can see on social media, he's kind of posting, going into budget shops and saying what a bargain he got, you know, so it could just be not such a great fit. You know, it sounds like he's trying to get a bargain out of you and trying to play. I mean, that's what it sounds like because we've been very transparent and we've, you know, we've had a relationship with the, with the, um, the MD for, you know, seven or eight years. And it's always this kind of frustration of, Oh, that's a lot of money. You know, this kind of stuff. Well, it's not as if we're lying about the time we're spending on it. You know, it, it makes me want to just say it's going to be a thousand when it's only 500 just for the, the hassle of the, you know, the, the bartering. Mm. I don't know if I got a like an answer for that one, like because I don't want to like tell you anything wrong. Like I don't know how your relationship is with them, how important they are to your business. You know, uh, I don't want to like say like ah fire them. You know, because <laughs> I don't know how important or how much money that they're bringing in. Uh, one thing I do know is, uh, I know I never charge people enough. I never really charge people for all the emails I do or the research I do. And I know I should be doing that. So I'm pretty sure none of us here are charging people enough. And, and uh, I had one person once uh, say before, uh, he's, he, he always says, if you're ever getting frustrated with a client, it's because you're not charging them enough. Uh, yes, I was just going to say the same thing. I remember that, that if you are having a frustration, you are not charging them enough. Yes. I was just going to say the same thing at the same moment, Jeff. <laughs> well, yeah, you summed it up. So <laughs> <laughs> that rings through my head too. And anytime I'm like, like, Oh my God, they keep calling me. Like they keep going, they keep going, asking for more. I'm like, damn, I'm not charging them <laughs> enough. I should have doubled my price. It would have been okay then. <laughs> yeah. Just on that point, actually, um, Christo talks about, um, you know, you should, you should look at look at the client, how much, you know, what's their income, and and adjust it accordingly. I quite like that, you know, so that you're you're being more reasonable with clients that can't necessarily afford it, and for clients that can. You know, they don't balk at these big numbers. Exactly. Uh, the biggest headaches are going to be clients with a very low budget because they're going to try to get as much as they can. And also the person that said that statement is Chris Doe. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's who said that. And I learned most of my stuff through there. Because <laughs> uh, you're part of the pro group as well, aren't you, uh, Jeffrey? You're the pro group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was just about to say, like, have you heard of the pro group? <laughs> oh, man, that makes four of us in the pro group inside this group now. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually, uh, Lauren, uh, do you know Lauren in the pro group? No. Okay. She's been in there for a little while, uh, but she's also usually inside these calls, too. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. We need to have a phone call sometime. I'm trying to connect with more people in the pro group. Yeah, and just good. like for, for everyone else, uh, the pro group is uh, like if you go on YouTube and you look up uh, Chris Doe or the future without an E, uh, th that's Chris Doe runs this one group and it's a paid group. It's kind of like this. In fact, it was one of like the things that sparked me to do this, you know, when I was in the, like, I've been active in the elementary community for a while now. And, uh, you know, I stopped like really participating inside the group because I felt it, it grew so big and there was some negativity going on. And I felt like, you know what, instead of having negativity inside this group, we should be giving support to this group because Elementor has, you know, it's a tool that helps people get a quick jump start into web design and development instead of putting people down 
instead of saying, oh, you don't know how to program or code, you're not a developer, like some of these guys in their talk. I'm so against that. I think that's like so negative and that's not how, that's not what we should be doing. We should be supporting and helping each other grow and realizing, you know, it's different now. You don't have to know, you know, all these languages in order to get a, get into this career. You need to know how to solve problems. That's what it comes down to. It's not the tool you use. It's not what code you use. Can you solve a problem and help people? And that's what I saw inside that group. I saw a problem and I wanted to help. So that's why I started this group right here. And I get all the good stuff though from the future pro group. I'm not going to front. <laughs> yeah. Well, th thanks very much. I've had a ton of value from today's call. This is the first call I've been on with you. It's been it's been really good. Thank you. Yeah, I did. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. I've I've got to get going. So, um, thanks everyone. Nice to meet you all. Cool. We're going nice to, to meet you. Uh, good to meet you, John. Uh, Bye. All right. So, guys, before we end this call, is there any like last questions or anything? All right. So. Um, yeah. Just a quick thing, Jeff. I was uh, looking forward for the last uh, couple of calls we had since we started the first one. Is there a place you have been able to, or you have been able to combine those PDFs? We are uh, expecting any possibilities on that. That's it. Yes. Next week, 100% for sure. I've already <laughs> built it and I'm even making a tutorial on what I built on it. Like, like, Okay, so I put it on our website, but I wanted to do something where it was only members that could access it, but I wanted to build uh, it with Elementor. So basically, uh, I built a membership section on our website without a membership plugin, using only okay. Elementor and the Elementor add-on. So I'm going to make a tutorial, but yeah, yeah, I was geeking out over it. But next week, for sure, we're going to have, it's going to be a resource section. It's going to have all the PDF downloads, and then we'll keep adding to it. Like, I think... Well, some of the things that I plan on adding to it later on as we continue and as we grow and as we evolve in this, because like right now as we're talking about like maintenance, but like later on, I could see us looking at like positioning, contracts, templates, all these kind of things. So I look for also putting a place where we could put these templates and we could put these other hmm. resources that's really going to help people out. Uh, yeah, sounds Next sweet, super helpful, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm really uh, grateful that uh, you guys are all here and, you know, participating in this. Uh, and if anybody has any feedback, any suggestions or questions, you know, uh, go ahead and post them inside the group or reach out to me at any time. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm not good with it. All right. That. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. It, it was great and uh, I feel grateful to be a part of this group and connecting with the other members and look forward to be again soon sharing the valuable information with everyone and get the insights, yes. <laughs> Man, it, it's really good seeing you guys here. And also Akash and uh, uh, Jerson, it's good uh, good meeting you guys. And seeing you you too. Yeah, Thank and, you for and sharing for and looking forward to next week. Ah, oh, cool, cool, man. All right, guys. Well, stay safe, stay positive, and uh, dude, get ready. It's about to get busy in our industry. It's about to get really busy, so get ready. Be prepared. Look at how you can offer more value. What are the solutions? What are the problems so you can give those solutions? And get ready. That's all I could say. <laughs> all right, guys. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Bye, guys. Stay blessed. Bye. Namaste. Namaste.